Random numbers are at the heart of any generative artistic experience. The hardest part of dealing with random numbers is taming them so that there's a sense of controlled chaos. Uh, PD has lots of different objects for generating random numbers, so in the first part of the video we'll take a look at what these objects are, and then we'll take a look at a sample usage, how we can uh, get some really interesting results using random numbers, and as well uh, we'll use Moses for some probability. Let's start by taking a look at the random object. So we'll use an object box and type random. And then the argument is the ceiling of the random numbers that will be generated from 0 to the argument. So let's say 100. Okay, we'll create a bang and a number atom. So now every time this object is banged, we'll get a random number between 0 and 100. So obviously if you wanted this to continually spit out random numbers, you would use a metro. Let's say one random number every 100 milliseconds. It's a very fast amount. The random object also will take in a message box of seed in order to create a new random seed. So to do this, create a message box that says seed and then give it a number. So let's say 17. Connect that to the hot inlet and then make sure that you bang the seed and then click Metro. And that'll help generate a different um, spin on the random numbers if you will. It's helpful so that your random numbers are more random even though it would seem to appear that well of course random numbers are going to be random there is some equation that's generating them and so seed helps to ensure that that equation is varied up so that your random numbers don't become similar. To demonstrate this you can actually copy the same patch, use the same seed, okay we'll bang the seed in each case and let's create a bang at the top to get both going at the same time. Now, what we'll do is we'll slow it down so we can actually see these random numbers. And if you take a look at the output, you're getting the identical set of random numbers, which is peculiar, but also it, it could be something that you tap into expressively. Okay, so now we'll take a look at a few other random objects that will generate random numbers but they have their own twist on them. Here are a few of the different random number objects. The first is random F, so we'll create a message box, type random and then capital F, and the argument will be the ceiling of the random uh, number, just like in random, so let's say 1. And what random F does is it generates a random float between 0 and the ceiling, so I chose 1 because I want numbers between 0 and 1, which is really good when you're prototyping um, sensor control and you don't have uh, the sensors, because often those sensors are going to spit out numbers between 0 and 1. I'll create a metro, let's say uh, 250 milliseconds, hook it up to random F, actually let's make it a little bit longer, let's say 1000. Create a toggle to turn on the metro, and finally our favorite object, the number atom. Lock the patcher and here we see there are random numbers between 0 and 1. So again, I, I, I like to use this when I'm prototyping um, sensor control and I know that the sensors are putting out between X and Y and I really need the floats. Okay, so another random object that's helpful to use, I'll just copy this over, but I'll change the object is triple rand. So you try triple and then capital R A N D and these are case sensitive so you want to make sure that you um, use the right case. And of course just as with random and random F the argument is the ceiling 
But in Triple Rand's case, it's going to generate three uh, sets of random numbers in the form of a list. And those random numbers will go between 0 and the number in the argument. So what we'll have to use here is unpack in order to unpack the list. And we're going to get three floats. And then we'll use three number atoms. Okay, and lock the patcher. And now you can see that we're getting floats between 0 and 10 in each of the outlets. So this is, I think, a really unique uh, random number generator. It can be really efficient. Um, again, if you're prototyping with sensors, uh, or if you're looking to control three parameters of an experience. But where triple rand gets to be really cool is that actually it can take three arguments, for one for each of the outlets. Um, so it's going to generate a three number list, and you can specify the range for each number in the list. A few ways to do this, you can actually just type the order from left to right. So let's say the first number range is from 0 to 5, the second one is from 0 to 10, and the third one is from 0 to 20. So we can start the metro again, and if you take a look at the three outlets, you'll see that the first one is limited between 1 and 5, the second one between, or sorry, 0 and 5, the second one between 0 and 10, and the third one between 0 and 20. And what's really cool about this is that you can use the inlet to send different lists. So we can set a message box. Let's say we want to change the range for all three. Uh, let's say 30, 10, and 2. So now from left to right in terms of outlets from unpack, these are the ranges. Okay, We have to make sure we send the message and then go at it. So triple rand is a, is a really cool random number generator. All right, and the third one is, I think, a really unique little object called drunk. And we'll give it the argument. And the argument is the, the total range of the random numbers. But what drunk is going to do is it's going to wobble around this range in steps. So it'll go between 0 and 10, but it'll meander around by hitting 9, 10, 9, 8, 8, 7, 8, 7, 6, 7, 8, 7, etc. So it's like the name expects sort of uh, hobbling around uh, on the street as if it's inebriated, which I think is somewhat funny. So we'll say drunk 10. And let's go ahead and copy this metro over. make it go a little bit faster. Let's say a half second. So 500 milliseconds. Create a number atom. All right, and let's watch it go. So you see that the random numbers are controlled in that they're adjacent. And there's right now they're walking downwards. But as it hits the floor, which is 0, it'll start to climb back up slowly. And since it's random, we could wait forever for it to climb back up, but trust me, it's going to climb back up. And you can use the second inlet to set the upper bounds of drunk. So we can send a message box of, let's say, 20. So that's the upper bounds of the entire um, message. So that's actually the argument that's being used now is the upper bounds for the range. All right, so if I click it and then use the metro, of course, it could take a long time for this to head back upwards of 20. Um, but essentially, it's going to expand beyond 10 as soon as it starts counting back up. OK, and another really cool thing about drunk is that you can use the rightmost inlet to set the steps. So right now, the steps are uh, adjacent. It's going from 4 and then to a number immediately higher or immediately lower. But you can set it so that it'll jump over numbers by setting the step argument. 
So let's create a message box and let's create, let's say, steps of five. Okay, so make sure we send it and let's take a look. So now you see that it's jumping much larger. The steps aren't necessarily five apart, but this is an indication of how large the steps are between jumps. So it's still meandering, but now it's, it's really wobbling uh, between two different numbers within this range. A useful way to use random numbers in generative art is to use them in conjunction with some sort of object that will help uh, probability. And so far we've gone over Moses, and Moses essentially takes a number and says, okay, if the number received is greater than or equal to the number, go to the, le to the right. If it's less, go to the left. And so what we'll do with the existing patch here, which is generating two chords, is we'll send ran random numbers into Moses in order to sound one chord or the other. I've already hooked PD into an FM8 uh, synthesizer on the machine. And I've got these two wonderful chords. And that delay you hear is built into the sound of the organ that I'm using within FM8 that's not generated by pure data. Okay, so now what I'll do is create first a random object that's going to generate numbers between 0 and 100. And I'll want random numbers to be fired mm, pretty quickly. Let's say between 125 and 250 milliseconds. And so I'll type metro. We'll start with 125 milliseconds. And then I'll create a message box that'll let me really quickly shift tempos to 250 milliseconds if I want, or back to 125 milliseconds. Okay. Let's create a toggle for the metro to start. So I'll create a bang to the side so that we can see how fast metro is banging. All right. And then I'll create a number box or a number atom rather underneath random so we can see what the random numbers are. So the key to getting this to work is to use Moses to receive the random number. All right, so we'll type Moses. And now we think about probability. If I type Moses 50, we're saying that if the numbers received are 50 or higher, go to the right. If they're lower, go to the left. And so you could see that since my total range is from 0 to 100, I essentially have a 50-50 chance of going to the right or the left. If I wanted a greater chance of going to the right, I would type 90. If, or I'm sorry, to the left, I would type 90. If I wanted a greater chance of going to the right, I would type 10. So this is a nice way of controlling um, the probability for one of these chords to be generated. So let's just start with 50 right in the middle. And that's not to say we're going to get exactly half of one chord, half of the other. But as you'll hear, it's going to sound more even than when we change it later. Okay, let me tidy this up. Okay, and I'll type bang, or I'll connect bangs to the outlets of Moses so that we just have a visual cue for when Moses is firing. Okay, and let's go. Okay, and it's nice that the FM8 has that delay bounce uh, in order to create some really cool uh, rhythmic bounce and dimension to it. Of course, we could do that in PD, but we'll save that for another movie. Okay, so now if I change the argument so that it's 90 instead of 50, we should theoretically get more of this chord on the left. And 
even here, we do get a lot more of the chord. I mean, think about it. There's a 9 to 1 chance that it's going to bang out the left and the right. So if we reverse that and type 10, we'll get more of the right. Okay, so I would hope that you'd think, okay, the next logical choice here is to use the inlet for Moses because that's going to set the argument. So we'll type 10, we'll type 50, and we'll type 90. Okay, so we're essentially saying, okay, one argument is going to send it out more often than not to the left, one argument is going to pretty much split it down the middle, and one argument is going to send it more often than not to the right. And then if you really start to think about how this can be used expressively, you could even have randoms driving these arguments so that you really get a, an interesting uh, rhythmic result. The pitches are still going to be the same because they're set in these lists here. And, I, and I'll explain just for a minute that the reason the lists are not connected directly in the make note is because if you send a list in the make note, it'll interpret this uh, the numbers in the list as pitch, velocity, duration. So since these are discrete pitches, I had to unpack them and then send all of the outlets into make notes. So that's why it's set up that way. Okay, so let me send the argument of 50 into Moses, a tempo of 250, and get it started. So it's, this is 50. So now 10. And 90. Let's make it fast. So I think I'm just using a single mouse, but imagine if you had this hooked up to a bunch of sensors or your uh, MIDI controller, or we were, con we were controlling the probability with uh, MIDI control in, or we were controlling the chords. Instead of having uh, these chords as lists, we could actually have MIDI notes being pressed on a keyboard. It would get to be uh, really pretty exciting.